Hello and welcome to this video on cleaning your column still. A column still is just as boring as a pot still and how you need to clean it, but it's also much more difficult. This is because a column still is a tall cylinder packed with steel wool or similar retardants that have to be dismantled and reassembled correctly to work properly. Cleaning a column still falls into two routines, one after every use and the other after every 10 to 20 or so uses. After each use, let it cool down, turn your still upside down, and fill it with water. Turn right side up and empty out the water. Do this two or three times. Ideally, you're going to run warm to hot water through the column still from the top down to the bottom after this, effectively reversing the routine you use to extract your alcohol. Let it dry thoroughly and then place into storage until needed again. Longer term, you need to take more care with your still, and this will ensure you get the longest service life possible. The first and most obvious sign you need to do something is if salts begin building up, either on the inside or outside of your still. These are often white, almost soot-like looking compounds. In more serious cases or advanced instances, they are physical, salt-like looking substances. These must be cleaned from the surface of your still before you do anything. The simplest way to do that is to apply plain white vinegar to a towel or rag and wipe it down. This should dissolve most of the salts. Now that you've cleaned the outside, look to the inside and pour white vinegar into both the pot and the condenser itself. Let it sit there for a little bit after covering all the surfaces. Now that the vinegar has been left to do its job for a few minutes, we'll first look at the boiler itself. Start by taking a non-abrasive scouring pad, cloth or something similar, and scrub it down. Make sure it's non-abrasive, as you don't want to put any new scratches in the surface that could be new sites for the same event to occur again. Once you've thoroughly cleaned the inside, which may take several repeats of the process, wash it out with warm water. That should give you the easiest solution. The second option with your boiler is to add vinegar and simply run through the process of a vinegar distillation run. That is, do everything as per an alcohol distillation run, but have vinegar in the boiler instead. This should do something very similar, and you'll know it's working if, at the end, the distillate product has a just slightly cloudy appearance to it if you haven't run your still in a while. If this is part of your regular cleaning routine, you may not notice anything at all. Now for the column, which should also have been sitting there with the vinegar working away. If you don't want to use vinegar, a second option to use is citric acid, approximately 2 tablespoons in 4 litres of water. This works the same way as the vinegar. Pour it in, let it sit for a few minutes, and then flush it out 2 or 3 times with water. Make sure that when you flush it out, you both push the water from the bottom to the top, and from the top down to the bottom. From here, you have a slightly more challenging decision to make. You can, if you wish, unpack your column. This involves taking out all the material from within the column. This can be stainless steel or copper mesh. In some cases, a ceramic product is used instead, and these look almost like small bearings. Once you've taken these out, you can place them in a large bucket or tub and treat them exactly the same way as you did the column itself. A small amount of vinegar, citric acid, or similar. Stir them around in there, which will then remove anything that should be on them. Pour the citric acid or vinegar wash out, and then rinse several times over. We consider washing the packing material somewhat more optional for a very simple reason. Repacking your column is tedious and not particularly fun. 
There are two approaches to this. One is simply to replace what is in there with what you've taken out. This is mostly simple enough. Take the various wads of mesh or similar, get a long stick and shove small sections in there until it gets to the end. Repeat this with the pole or stick you're using, pushing it in just until it touches the previous wad of mesh. The reason you do this this way is that you want consistent density of the packing material. If you simply shove everything in as far as you can and as dense as you can, the very top of your still column will have very densely packed material. What's at the bottom won't be, and that can create all kinds of problems. If you're going to instead replace it with new material, which should be done, if not regularly, at least every now and then, you can either buy it as a bag of individual pieces of mesh, or in long strips. In either case, you need to create small measurements and sections. These will then be pushed into the column. Each section should be about the same width as your column, so you have one consistent piece going across the entire width. This will often be about 50 millimeters wide. If it's a roll that it comes in originally, you'll need to create a new roll out of this, or cut it in such a way that you can push an entire wad up there in a single flat section. This is then made to the right size and shoved into the column. If you're working with a roll, you should try and move it gently but slowly and surely. It should help to keep your mesh reasonably well in shape. Once it's all the way in, repeat this process until all of the material has been packed into the column or the column is full. Remember to ensure that you don't overpack it or fill all the voids and spaces between the mesh. That's where the vapour from your distilling process rises up and through. If you don't pack it enough, it rises too quickly and you don't get separation. If you don't pack it tightly enough, then you don't get the separation needed. It's something of a balancing act. Too tightly packed and it takes far too long and you get very little yield. Not tightly enough and you get inconsistent and unpleasant blending of all the content. This means you may not be able to separate the heads out properly, which can have very untoward side effects. Once your column is filled, you can then reassemble it by placing the appropriate washers and nuts at the bottom of it. You may observe some leaking during the process of cleaning, particularly if you turn the column upside down. This shouldn't be a surprise to you. At least at the top of most designs, there's no seal. It's simply a very simple cap put at the top. This ensures that the water you put through it to cool doesn't leak out the top or get spilled. The inlet and outlet are well below the top of the still itself, and so they should never get near the lid. It simply keeps it all neat and compact and prevents contamination with dirt as well. As a result, you should have no surprises if, when you turn it upside down, some small amount of water will escape. This won't have any effect on the still, but it may surprise you and be a concern at first. Of course, this isn't a rule for all stills, which can be manufactured very differently. Some stills may have incorporated a feature that has the same effect, where the cap of the still isn't so tightly attached that it can't come off in the case of extreme pressure buildup. And this is another reason why you may see a leak. After you finish cleaning your still, you need to let it dry thoroughly. You can do this two ways depending on which part you're talking about. First is the boiler. This can be done with paper towel, rags or similar. Simply turn it upside down, pour out any water that's still left in it, shake slightly, and then wipe until dry. The second is slightly more difficult. When you have repacked your column, you should have repacked it with dry material if possible. If it's not dry when it goes in, you can force hot air through it, or leave it to sit for a little while. The easiest option is to wash the packing material, leave it on an open bench to completely dry, and then repack it. 
before repacking, wipe down the inside of the column with a rag or paper towel to dry it. It should now be right to put into storage for an extremely extended period if needed or until used next time. Thank you for watching this video. If you have found it interesting, consider liking, sharing and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions that you have below.